And today is a special day because back with us again, we have Gary Brackett. Come on, would y'all help welcome Gary Brackett, Indianapolis Colt, Super Bowl champion. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, thank Gary, you. Gary, good to have Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Now, y'all, if y'all noticed, when Gary was walking out, he had, a, he had a little bit of a limp, okay? And it's not because I kicked him in the leg, all right? <laughs> but uh, just, uh, Gary, why don't you just kind of tell us about your leg, kind of what's going on there, and we want to be praying for you as well, praying for you to get healed up. Man, hey, man, I appreciate that. So um, how many people have kids in the room and like, coach your kids, train your kids? <laughs> uh, so New Year's Eve, I'm like, we're going to start the year off exercising and working out. So we're in the basement, and I got a ladder drill, and we're going through the ladder drill, two feet in, two feet out, icky shuffle. And in my mind, as an athlete, I'm like, all right, let them show them this. And I tell them, uh, whatever you do frontwards to the ladder, you should be able to do backwards. So now I'm going to backward icky shuffle, right? So <laughs> my feet work, I'm going in, right? My last cone or last box, I hit the yellow uh, strip on the plastic. It went left and my body went right. Um, so yeah, I tore my quad tendon. Uh, the funny story is, um, and, and I never had knee problems, but um, but then it, it like it, when you tore your quad tendon, it like pops out like it's a, a dislocation. So it like popped backwards. So I, my kids were looking at me like, <laughs> yeah. so I, I hurry up and push it back in place. Like, oh, oh nothing, nothing to see here. Uh, my oldest daughter, she's fourteen. She was like, we're not doing that drill. <laughs> <laughs> We're retiring that one. That one's yeah, done. Like, no, we could do something else, man. But I'm recovering. It was my quad tendon. I had surgery uh, in January 3rd, so I'm five weeks out. So, uh, yeah, definitely recovering. But I, I definitely would appreciate your prayers. Yeah, we'll be praying for you to get healed up. Yeah. I think it's about a six-month recovery, but we'll pray. It goes quicker, and we'll pray that he never finds that yellow ladder uh, thing again. Ooh. If we put that, man. put that one in the trash, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you I, gotta, gotta, I gotta become a better communicator. Now. No, okay. like, uh, I, I don't have to do it. I just have to speak it out. Just speak it out. Yeah. Now you've had a lot of surgeries mm, and throughout yeah. your career and 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 whatnot. Why don't you share with the? How many have you had? Yeah. So I had ten surgeries wow. throughout my throughout my life. Uh, in the NFL, I shared this earlier that I had this thing that you know jokingly I was like I wanted to play ten years or I was gonna stop at ten surgeries. <laughs> okay. um, but I got to nine years and I had eight surgeries when I retired. I had two cents then, so uh, wasn't a goal. I was looking, looking to hit <laughs> so for you, sure. You, you said it. You yeah, hit it. Just <laughs> yeah, I, I was definitely uh, managing my own expectations, man. But uh, it's a part. Of, it's a part of the job. It's a part of that profession. And uh, I shared earlier that oftentimes we want the dream without you know any of the difficulties. Yeah. Uh, but you know sometimes there's some things that come along with our dreams, our goals, our aspirations, and and for me that was just one of them. Yeah. Wow. We'll pray for no more. No more. Yes, no more. You hit 10, be yes. done with it. Um, Gary, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Where did you grow up? And when did you start playing football, loving football, realizing, oh, I'm actually good at this? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I grew up in uh, Camden, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Camden um, is like our, in New Jersey, is like Gary, Indiana. Sorry if any from <laughs> Gary, Indiana, uh, but you kind of know what that means. Um, in, in fact, Camden... At one point, they won a, it wasn't an award, but they got named number one, like, worst city in America. Oh, wow. And and they had T-shirts that said, we are number one, and on the back it said, worst city in America. <laughs> so that's the area. Might as well market it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, so um, at five years old, we moved uh, into Glassboro, a small suburban town, 20 minutes outside of Camden, Philadelphia. I grew up with uh, three older brothers, one okay. younger sister. Um, and we just always played sports. I mean, it was football, basketball, baseball. Um, but when we got involved in football, I figured out, like, I could actually hit people and not get in trouble. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's something to this. So, uh, so I kind of stuck with that, right? And um, I was always an aggressive kid. I was, you know, the youngest boy, so I kind of had to be aggressive uh, if, I w if I wanted to get anything in the house. So um, then I grew up just playing football, loving it. And I got, when I got to high school, um, I played football and basketball, um, but yeah, I just just fell in love with it. Okay, were you always on defense? So it's funny. I ran the ball a little bit. I was an offensive player. Okay. Um, my my freshman year, um, scored like twenty something touchdowns. Okay. Uh, so my sophomore year, you know, uh, I'm thinking this is my sixteen year old self. Like I'm gonna play JV and I'm gonna score twenty something touchdowns and have a whole bunch of girls. <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> but um, so what happened was, though, um, varsity, I wasn't really expected to play varsity. I thought older class were going to play. But the first game of the year on varsity, uh, the coach uh, wanted to put me in in the first quarter. The other linebacker was making some mistakes. He was like, just go out there for a play. You know, we used to run the play in from the sideline. So I ran the play in, called it. Um, it was not a blitz. However, I thought it was a good idea if I blitzed, <laughs> right? So I blitzed inside the backfield, made a tackle for loss. Um, he kept me out there. I made about three more tackles that series. Okay. Uh, I had about 15 tackles that game. Um, so it was just like, yo, you're, you're a defender from now on. Like, fall in love with this. There you go. That was your calling. Yeah, that was it. That was awesome. So coming, uh, you know, playing linebacker now in high school, mm -hmm. assume you had some really strong seasons, your junior, senior year. What did it look like as far as college, you know, going to that next level? Were you getting offers or whatnot? Kind of uh, how? Give, give us that part of your story. Yeah, so I went to a small school. Um, so it was about 500 kids that went there. Okay. I'm um, 130 in my class. And um, I didn't realize, you know, shame on me, that when the college showed interest and sent letters, that I was supposed to, like, mail them back. Oh. So, I, so I just had a shoebox full of letters, <laughs> right, thinking, like, some way, like, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> um, they did not come. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, my senior year, my coach sent out my uh, senior year playoff tape to get me recruited. So wow. a, bit, a little bit late in the recruiting yeah. process. So, um, And then, unfortunately, if you just look at statistics, well, we were either involved in a good game or it was 28-0 at halftime and I wasn't playing anymore. So, like, my kind of stats suffered, you know, just yeah. because of that type of a lineup. So, um, wasn't really on anyone's radar. Rutgers came down. Uh, they gave me ability to be what's called, like, a, a recruited walk-on. Okay. Um, so, I walked on at Rutgers University, and, you know, by the grace of God, um, my parents were able to figure, all that, figure it out. We had to pay full tuition for two seasons, but okay. uh, it was rough, but they, they figured it out. So how did that, what did that process look like? So you're, you're in this program, you're walking on. When did you become scholarship? How, how did all that happen? Yeah, so um, crazy story. So my third season now, getting into, I get a phone call from my father during training camp. And he's like, hey, I got some bad news. Um, the tuition bill came. At this point, I'm 18, 19 years old, so I'm like, all right, pay it. Like, <laughs> like you know, how many people were young, you thought you, your parents had, like, money on trees somewhere, <laughs> and somehow they always had money, right? So um, he was like, no, it doesn't work that way. Um, there's no more equity in our house. I took out two line of credits. I don't have any more equity, so wow. you got to come home. So at the time, I told my position coach um, that I, I had to leave. I wasn't on scholarship, and he was surprised because I, at this point, I'm, I'm on special teams. I'm, I'm, I'm back up at linebacker. Um, so he said, I, I'll talk to head coach, no problem. So I'm like, okay. So I filled my Hyundai Excel uh, hatchback, you know, with everything I own. Um, I, I, I say I got some biceps, some residual effect, because at 55 miles per hour, the car shook, right? So I had to keep it straight. Um, but I get called into the coach's office that day, the head coach, uh, and he walks in, and uh, he, he says, hey, man, I just want to let you know that I, we're going to recruit players that are bigger and better than Gary Brackett. And I'm just like, ouch. It's like, your girlfriend breaks up with you, and then she says, I'm going to date a guy who's cuter, yeah. got more money. <laughs> so, so I'm just like, yo, I'm, I'm good. Like, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, but he says, um, we just uh, lost a player due to academics, and um, I, I love your work ethic. I love what you stand for. And we're gonna give you a scholarship. Wow. So man, so I get up, right? I, I'm crying, I'm <laughs> hugging him, I'm comfortably like, you're not gonna forget this. He's pushing me away. Um, oh man. And then um, this moment uh, changed my life. I went into to the weight room. The weight room is about this size in college football. There's 100 guys lifting weights, I'm making a bunch of noise. I told my three or four buddies, like, man, I get a scholarship, I get to stay. And I never forget this uh, guy Wesley Robinson. He walks up to me like, hey, what's going on? Um, I was like, I got a scholarship, I get to stay. He was like, scholarship. You should worry about starting. And I was like, starting? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I, was, I, I, like, I, I just had the meal plan <laughs> where I could eat like every other day in school. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was a kid outside the mess hall, like, oh, you couldn't, you give me something to eat? You got an extra swipe? All right, let's, let's go eat then. What are we waiting on? So, um, so that night, though, um, when I went to sleep or tried to, um, that, that, that conversation just kept on replaying in my head. You should be the starter. You should be the starter. Um, so then I, I sat down 
and I wrote out a list of things of what I need to do to become a starter. Wow. So I had to work harder. I had to be more diligent. Um, I had to be more focused. I had to give up some things, right? Uh, staying up late, eating pizza, right? That was five-hour pizza meals, right? It cost <laughs> something more than $5, I can assure you that. Um, but, yeah, so I, I went in. I, I posted that that piece of paper on my bed so I could see it every morning, every night before I went to bed. And the next day I committed to that list. I finished my Rutgers career um, being a captain, uh, being a starter, uh, two-time MVP, wow. and now I'm in the Rutgers Hall of Fame because I made that commitment. Come on, let's go. That's awesome, man. I didn't know you were in the Rutgers Hall of Fame. Yeah. That is really, really cool. Well, so obviously you finished really strong. I mean, what a story. Again, not even scholarship, two years, but then you get scholarship, and then the power of a word, right? Mm. That gentleman, you'll, you'll never forget him and what he spoke to you, and uh, but you obviously put in the work. And so after that, what, what was the process to the NFL? How'd you get there? What was that journey like? Yeah, so then the process of the NFL was, you know, from a uh, Rutgers, you know, wasn't the powerhouse we are now, right? Not not quite, but um, <laughs> but we won five games in my in my four year career. So um, you know, we're we're almost the laughing stock, right? <laughs> um, so uh, at the, our pro day, which most you know universities has all thirty two teams represented, yeah. we had four. Wow. Um, so the Indianapolis coaches had to be one of those teams. Okay, I worked out really good. Had some really solid numbers and. Um, you know, they say, hey, uh, we're going to be in touch with you, uh, no promises. And the second day of the draft, I'm sitting at home, and I get a call in the seventh round after I didn't talk bad about every linebacker that got picked ahead of me. Um, <laughs> Gary and, uh, was taking receipts, so, y'all. Uh, he was taking receipts. I was like, man. Um, but, yeah, they said, hey, um, there's opportunity if you don't get drafted that we're going to sign you as a free agent. Uh, you can come out here and make the team. So I said, man, that's, that's all I need is opportunity. That's incredible. Do you remember what they said? Because, again, you only had four teams. Did they share with you? Like, again, Rutgers only won five games. So it's not like, you know, like you said, you're not like one of the top teams getting looked look at. Do you remember what they said to you, just what they saw about you at that pro day or their time with you to go ahead and offer you that contract? So the crazy thing that happened, right, is we had a tight end, L.J. Smith, who played for the Eagles, that was projected to be the first round. Okay. So on Wednesday... He's training and, like, tweaks his hamstring. Mm. On Thursday, we get a letter that they're going to reschedule the event because everyone's coming to see him. You guys won five games in four years. There can't be anybody else <laughs> on this team. Um, so on Friday, we got a message that is back on. Okay. So I guess a bunch of teams rescheduled didn't come, but four teams okay. came, and, you know, a bunch of my buddies – um, unfortunately, they went out when they heard it was off, and they couldn't quite recover, you know, mm. quick enough. And and I was there. I was finishing every drill. I, I was working hard. I was I wasn't stopping. I had a motor. I could comprehend stuff. Um, even at the end of the workout, um, they asked me back to your question about running back. They asked, "Hey, can you play any running back?" So they had me actually running some routes out the backfield, okay. catching the ball. They were like, "Hey, are you versatile? <laughs> what can you do for us?" So. Um, I had a really, a really good, you know, event, and it was like, man, I just love the way that you work out here. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. So, the Colts call you. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, we want to sign you. Now, help, because I don't understand all of it. I, you know, I was, you know, I follow the Colts, and I see they sign. Mm -hmm. I think they have a number of undrafted people, right. but not everybody makes it, right? So, what, what was that like for you? You get signed. You show up to Colts camp, and uh, and then you you obviously made the team, but what was that journey like? Yeah, so it's um, uh, my my signing bonus right at the time was a whopping two thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. Right, and in my mind, I thought it was two thousand dollars, so I'm spending half of that right <laughs> before I got here. They gave me my check; it was twelve hundred. I'm like, who's Fuda, Fuda, and all these rest of these people? Like, I ain't, I ain't order that. Uh, but um, that's what it was. So um, I'm, I'm already in the hole when I got here. Um, but I, I was signing the contract. You know, we're all sitting. Uh, there's about 100 uh, free agents and people that come on the team. 53 end up making a roster. Another eight, you know, make the practice squad. Uh, so it was highly competitive. But when I'm signing my contract, you know, I never thought that I would be in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. Right? I thought it was a bunch of cornfield. I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> But when I was but when I was signing my contract, a little bit nervous, 
just met Peyton Manning for the first time. How, how you doing, Mr. Manning, sir? <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, and, you know, you had to write down, like, what's your, what team are you on in the NFL? And I'm on the Indianapolis Colts. But I never spelled Indianapolis before. So, so, I, so I asked the guy, like, yo, how do you spell Indianapolis? He's like, oh, my God. Like, how are you going to help us? It was like, it was, the, it was the eyes that got me in trouble, right? The I in. There's a lot of eyes. So um, I ended up, end up figuring it out. Um, I made the team. Um, and, and in training camp, it was just, it, I can remember this, this play. It was on uh, the second day of training camp. The first day, I didn't get any experience. I was fourth string. Uh, the, the problem with four string NFL is that four string doesn't exist. Okay. So, so I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna see any time. So this was the opportunity. It was uh, kickoff return team was up, and it was a scout team, uh, kickoff team. So we just had to run down. You put a beanie on your head and just run down, and give them a look. Um, one of the veteran players was like, "Oh man, I gotta run down, give myself up." Um, you know, we call it dummy card. You do what, what the card says. Um, I was like, I'll run down for you. He was like, for real? I get a break? I'm like, yeah, I ain't do nothing all day. <laughs> man, I got that beanie on. I said, it is on. They kicked the ball off, man. I flew down the field, okay. ran past my guy, made the tackle. The coach was like, that going on? Where'd he come from? I'm like, hey, right here, 58, coach. <laughs> uh, so the next play, uh, the gentleman, um, I'm going to say his name, Darnell Thompson. Uh, but <laughs> he was like, hey, 58, like, calm down. I hit him with the Matumbo, like, <laughs> like, strap up. He was like, okay. So the second time it happens again, they kick the ball off. He's strapped up. He's coming full speed. I'm running full speed. Um, right before we make collision, um, right before you're, you attack someone, you know, 40 yards apart, you have to, like, transfer from your weight from your heels to your toes. Okay. So if you go on your heels, you're too flat. Somebody can run you over. You got up on your toes, so you have some momentum. So knowing that, once you go on your toes, you're susceptible to a move. So he got on his toes last minute. I swam across him. He fell on his face. I ran out and made the play again. It was like, oh, my God, can anybody block him? Mm. So the next day, it was kickoff team, and someone's name was scratched out, and my name was written in. Wow. That's awesome. So I, I say that to say that a lot of opportunities in life uh, kind of show up as overalls, and it looks like work. <laughs> Right? That's a word right there. <laughs> but it's not until we actually go through with it and do that work that we actually get closer to what we actually want to achieve. So did you hit a point where they were like, you're, you're on, you're official, you've made the team? Yeah, so um, my first uh, NFL game was a preseason game in Chicago. Uh, it was my second time ever in an NFL stadium. Okay. Uh, we, we scalped tickets when I was like a senior in high school. Uh, $50 at the Eagle Stadium. We had, we had the last seat in the house. <laughs> like, literally, we were touching the ceiling. So my second experience, I'm at the game, and they're like, hey, be ready for special teams in the second half. Uh, first quarter, one of the guys broke his hand. Um, so they're on the sideline, and the, head co I mean, the defensive coordinator was like, all right, who are we going to put in? They drafted a linebacker at fifth round. Um, and we're talking. I was supposed to be third string. He was like, oh, let's put Gary in. So they put me in the first quarter. Uh, my first preseason game, I was like, oh, I got me? So I'm stressing, oh, my God, he said me. <laughs> so I'm um, nervous. I go out there. Um, but I've always had, like, leadership qualities. It's something I was, I was the youngest of, of three boys, so I had to speak up if yeah. I wanted to get something done. So I would get in the huddle, and they were used to the huddle being kind of wild. You know, they're doing what they want to do. But I, when, I, when I got in the huddle, I was like, hey, eyes up. Everybody eyes on me. I'm not calling a call to everybody sh quiet. And they're looking like who the heck is this kid <laughs> talking to us like this? But I called the calls, based my voice, uh, made all the correct adjustments, made some plays, and they was like, oh, man, this, this kid is all right. So from there, I kind of realized, like, yo, I got a, I got a shot. That's awesome. What are some of your favorite uh, memories from the NFL? Oh, man. Uh, my favorite memory is, is the second game after that Chicago game, we played Seattle at home, and they were calling out the defense. And um, when they call the defense, they call every player individually. When I was young, I had a reoccurring dream of having my name get called out of NFL Tough. Wow. Right? And, and when that happened, um, now Indianapolis coach, number 58 from Rutgers, Gary Brackett. It was like the longest that anyone has ever taken running out on the field. I was just taking it all in. It's like, oh, my God, look at this. So I, I run out there, man, but... 
um, it was the first time I realized that dreams can actually come true. Mm. And, and for me, that was so important because I felt like if my career would have ended right there, I, I would have made it. Mm. Um, so obviously I played nine years after that, uh, but that moment was so special to me. The next moment, um, unfortunately, it was 2005, uh, a playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers at home, and Jerome Bettis got the ball on about the three-yard line, yeah. and, and I put my, my helmet right in his, on the ball, made a fly in the air. He fumbled, uh, but unfortunately, Nick Harper picked the ball up. <laughs> uh, he didn't quite zig when he hit his ass. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger tackled him, and it's crazy now. Um, it's going down as the immaculate redemption and, and, like, the fumble was cut out, so they just see Ben Roethlisberger tackling Nick Harper now, right? That's the clip that you see in the edits. But in my mind, it's just one of those things, like, man, it, until that clock turns 0, zero, zero like, yeah. it's still opportunity to make a play. 100%. You were ready. Yes. You made the play. That was it. Nick, not so much. Not so much. He was... <laughs> Not so much. Uh, and then we won't talk about the kick that happened yeah, after that. It was yeah, a painful right. moment for me as yeah, a Colts. Oh, man, it was rough. Oh, man, when that ball came out, I was going crazy. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm glad that was, that was <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure y'all were too. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was rough. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Well, that's really cool. I, I have some rapid fire questions for you, okay? okay? Just some, some, some fun ones here. And, and then I want to dive into your faith a little bit. Uh, okay, favorite cartoon character growing up? Mm, character. Um, man, uh, Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson, all right. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, what's your favorite food? Uh, favorite food is pizza. Pizza, nice. Favorite restaurant? Uh, early I said Ruth Chris, and I'm kind of a guest chain as a former restaurant tour. Uh, so I like uh, Juicy's, is like a um, Juicy Seafood is a good restaurant. Juicy's, okay. I got to put one on my list here. Uh, favorite movie? Favorite movie, um, uh, The Program. Okay. Favorite actor? Denzel. All right. Favorite actress? Uh, Viola Davis. Okay. What's your favorite song? Favorite song, um, I was stumped early, but I, I remind now is uh, Jay-Z, Heart of the City, but the addition on, like, the MTV Unplugged with, like, the live music. Oh, yeah, oh you, that was, you taking them back. MTV, yeah, yeah. Our younger generation, they're like, MTV, MTV. Unplugged. Yeah. Right. They just show videos after school. Just, what? Just Google it, y'all. Park. Google it. Uh, what's your favorite hymn or worship song? Yeah, uh, man, Maverick City. Uh, anything by them really just amazing. But, um, yeah, Grateful is probably one of, one of my favorites. Grateful. Okay, I like that one. Uh, favorite Bible verse? Um, I could do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me. Amen, amen, amen. And then we're all dying to know, Gary, tonight, mm -hmm. Chiefs or 49ers? Who you got? Man, man. It, it, it's, it's crazy because the 49ers has a powerful offense. They got weapons all over the place. But I like the Chiefs. Okay. Yes, okay. That, that continuity and their ability uh, to ad-lib and freestyle. I mean, it's almost like they're in the backyard. Like, go to the Cadillac, turn around, and I hit you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, they make it work. Chiefs. Uh, okay, I got to pan. The, I got to ask the audience here. Chiefs, who's going Chiefs? Who's going Chiefs tonight? All right. Niners. Who's going Niners? Okay. Brock Purdy is at church today. I didn't even know that. All right. Uh, I, I got the Niners, too. I got the Niners, too. Well, Gary, tell us, how did you come to faith in Christ? Yeah. Uh, growing up, you know, my mother was trained to be an ordained reverend. Okay. So uh, at the time, you know, I told the guys earlier, my mom had a drug problem. Uh, she drugged me everywhere I needed to go. <laughs> so it was choir rehearsal. Okay. Right. I mean, this is the time where they had the sister act too. So we're we were doing all those <laughs> all those hymns. Um, but yeah, and and I, I shared the story just how passionate she was about it. Yeah. And and it wasn't necessarily at church is where I found it, but it was more so at home, seeing how she lived her life. Mm. Powerful. And and it's one thing to like to feel it, but it's another thing to see it. Mm. And just how she lived her life, I'm like, man, there's a guy somewhere. There's no one, there's someone this kind, this patient. I mean, we used to rambunctious kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she was just always there to support us and and to believe in us. That's incredible. Yeah. Come on, parents, parents that love the Lord and hey, keep 
keep dragging them to church, right? Just keep on bringing them. Garrett, how about this? What was maybe one of the most difficult seasons you faced, either professionally or personally, and how did your faith get you through that season? Yeah, so when, when I was first in the NFL, I got a call that October that my father, who was a Vietnam vet, um, had unfortunately uh, died. Um, pretty sudden, wasn't quite aware of it. Um, so I'm going home, and, you know, um, as a boy, when I was growing up, it was always like, Mama, when I, when I make it, I'm going to buy you a house. Mm -hmm. um, so that off season, I spent a lot of time with my mom. I'm actually buying her a house. I, I did all right after the $2,000 signing bonus. I figured out the suit of food mm -hmm. thing and uh, <laughs> saved some money. Um, and um, so we're going to put, we put a down payment on a house. And we're going to now, you know, the, the area where you go to the builders and you pick out all the finishes. And the finishes that she was picking out, I was like, Mom, this is my third year in the NFL. Like, I, like, <laughs> I don't know if no, there's a budget thing we need to discuss, <laughs> you know. Um, but unfortunately, um, that February, she passed away. Wow. Yeah, and, you know, what I realized is that she wasn't shopping for her physical home. She was shopping for her heavenly home. Mm. Mm. Same time, my brother uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Um, he had T-cell neuroblastular leukemia. Um, he was three years older than me. Okay. Um, so we kind of looked like twins, which was good because in high school, essentially, when he turned 21, I turned 21. <laughs> um, if you guys know what that means, if not, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, so I, I, I was a bone marrow donor. My first year in the NFL, that training camp, um, I was in the hospital, uh, like, donating blood for him uh, for his cancer. And then unfortunately, uh, he lost his life as well. That was an 18-month span when I lost my father, my mother, and then my brother. Wow. Um, and a lot of times, you question God. Yeah. And I can remember going upstairs uh, in my house um, where my parents' bathroom was at. You know, growing up, it was like, yo, don't, don't y'all, I don't got no reason to be in our bathroom, <laughs> right? But in their bathroom, and I, I obviously snuck in there several times, big house, um, but uh, there was a painting in the poem that I never really looked at and realized until, like, when they were both going and planning all the, the events and funerals. Um, but the poem was Footprint. Okay. And it talked about a man who, in every area, in, in chance of his life, when he, he had a challenge, he saw, you know, um, two set of footprints. Mm -hmm. But in, in the worst time of his life, he only saw, saw one pair. And he, and he asked God, like, where were you at where I needed you most? Mm. And that's what God responded my son, at that moment, that's when I carried you. Mm. Yeah. So I, I definitely, at that moment, feel like I was carried, you know, through those things. And, and you know, um, I, I don't think the Lord puts anything on us that we can't bear. Mm -hmm. And it just really made me value life. Yeah. And how precious it is. Yeah. Yeah. Man, thank you for sharing that. That's yeah. really powerful. Gary, as, as we wrap up, could you just, I'd love just if you could give one piece of advice or wisdom just to kind of tell our church family today. Man, I, um, I'm, I'm such a strong believer uh, in the underdog and, and the people that have been counted out, um, the, the people that weren't first place. Um, and there's the quote that says, Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm. And and I've just been, always been a firm believer that hard work works. Yeah. And and I've learned in my life to realize even when I put in the hard work, it doesn't guarantee that I'm going to get the win. Yeah. So then I've learned to fall in love with the process and divorce myself from the outcome. Mm. That's good. So, so I'm going to move, and I'm going to do everything I can in my power to get my desired result. Yeah. But if it doesn't happen, and most times it doesn't, it doesn't I'm not going to be discouraged. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on doing my part. Yeah, that's awesome. Can we give it up for Gary Brackett? Man, Gary, thank you so much, brother. Thank you for your transparency. Thanks for sharing. Come on, give it up for him again. As he heads off, 
What a powerful story. Uh, Gary has a book called Winning, just has more about his life story. He'll be out in the lobby and you can stop by and see him. And if you want to purchase a copy, I have a copy. I've read the whole thing. And uh, uh, man, I just couldn't agree. We talked about this, I think, last week. You know, the great things in life, the, uh, they take hard work. And uh, that's, that's biblical. The Bible talks about uh, hard work and, and, and good planning, um, but it also talks about trusting in the Lord. And so I hope today, just hearing Gary's story, that you can see that he's just like you. We all go through it. Nobody's life is perfect. We all have challenges. But if you will trust in the Lord, he'll carry you through. If you'll trust in the Lord, he'll carry you through.